We've arrived at an interesting point in history where, for the first time, a large number of people are buying their next electric car. And they're asking me a lot of questions. Will it charge the same way with the same gear as my current or last electric car? If only it were so easy as plugging a lamp into a socket at your house. But it's not. Okay, the first thing I gotta break to you is that something you've thought all this time is not true. That thing on the wall in your garage or the one you plug into at the mall is actually probably not a charger. It's called an EVSE, an Electric Vehicle Service Equipment Adapter. It's basically not a lot more than a smart AC outlet. The actual charger for your electric car is in your electric car. That's because batteries hold DC power but oddly enough, we charge them with AC power. So the AC has to be converted to DC on its way to the battery, and that is done and regulated by a charger inside the car. The exception to that AC to DC dance is when you plug into a DC charger. Those are the ones that do the really fast charge, like a Tesla supercharger. So now let's talk about the three kinds of charges you can get on these different types of chargers. The first and most basic is level one. This is basically a survival charge, a trickle charge. To charge a car this way takes an entire day or longer. It's just to give you enough charge to get to a good charger. It runs on 120 volts AC nominally. That's like an average household outlet. So you can see there's not a ton of power there. It can deliver up to two kilowatts. I'm gonna quote these in kilowatts because that relates to the capacity of your car battery, which is kilowatt hours. A kilowatt hour is a kilowatt of power delivered for one hour or any varying combination of those two. It's kind of the coin of the realm when you're thinking about batteries and chargers relating to each other. Things get really interesting when you step up to a level two charger. Now we're talking about the broad majority of real world EV life. Now level two runs off 240 volt electrical circuits also commonly found in your home, like an electric dryer or an electric range, but also found widely in commercial installations. This is not too hard to find, but it does give you a ton more power, up to 90 kilowatts, which you can see is dramatically more than we saw with level one. When you see a car like a Nissan Leaf, say a full charge can be done overnight in seven or eight hours, level two is what they're talking about. The ultimate level is level three, and this one's also kind of an odd one. Now, as you've noticed, our levels have been taking the voltage of the previous level and doubling it. And as a result, level three, yes, can be a 480 volt AC circuit going into the charger of your car. We keep doubling the available voltage. But typically, that's not what it is in the US. A level three charge normally refers to a DC charger. So this is a terminal you plug into that is already delivering DC to your car. A messy, inefficient conversion no longer has to happen on the way to the battery. That is part of why it's able to charge the battery dramatically faster. It's talking the same language, and it's got a ton of power to do so. DC level three charging is a key part of the main trend in acceptability of EVs right now because it universally takes the charge time from being measured in hours to being measured in minutes. That is a hugely better message in the marketplace. Now we got a decent look at the kinds of juice you can get into your EV. It's time to look at the rather bewildering array of connectors that do that. Starting with the granddaddy of them all, and this is all for US market, by the way. Asia, Europe, they got their own connectors, but I'm talking US. J1772, sexy name, isn't it? That's the technical spec it was given by the Society of Automotive Engineers. And this is a very solid standard. What you see here are five pins. If you look at one of these connectors end on, this is what you'll see. The three big ones are line, neutral, and ground, just like a three-prong plug in your house. And these two smaller pins down here are basically communications pins. One makes sure that this thing is plugged into your car securely, and the other one is kind of saying stop or go in terms of sending electricity into the charger. Now note, there is nothing in here that provides DC fast charging. These can only go up to level two AC charging. So to add DC fast charging, which I just told you was such a hot topic, they've come up with something called CCS. This is a stepchild of 1772. As you can see, there's your 1772 at the top, and they've literally grafted on a pair of high current additional pins for DC positive and DC negative 
on the same handle. This, for example, is the same connector Porsche will put in the new Taycan, which promises to raise the bar on charge potency, running up to 350,000 watts through it. Next up, we get to a connector that started in the Japanese EV market and picked up quite a bit of global adoption. It's called the Chatamo connector. This is an oddball, don't even ask me what that name means, something to do with the time it takes to drink a cup of tea, which is how fast they envision this charging your EV, something like that. Note you've got two big conductors, two large pins that carry high current plus and minus DC voltage. Then you've got two sets of small four pin quadrants and all of those are analog or digital communications. So all this does is DC fast. There's no provision in here at all for level one or level two AC coming into the car. This has become a bit of an orphan, at least in the US, where it's kind of now just relegated to the Nissan Leaf. Nissan's big on this guy. And then of course, there's Tesla. Tesla has earned the right to do things their own way, in many ways. Luckily, their own charger is about the most elegant connector out there. This is their own proprietary charge connector. And it's a thing of beauty, I got to admit. It's slim, the packaging is nicely done. It's not this horsey, clunky, grafted onto thing like some connectors we've seen. What you've got here are two main pins that can be used either for positive and negative DC, for a DC fast charge, or those can also pass AC line and AC neutral in combination with the center bottom pin functioning as ground. Again, there are your three conductors for level two, just like you have in your house. And then, of course, the two bottom side pins are, once again, the pins you need for basic communication, like we've seen in other connectors. But this one is so nicely packaged. It's small. It's beautifully done. If you even look at the port, the way it's rounded on those shoulders, it almost wants to find its way into the car. Now that's all great, except you're not gonna find this at the end of any cable of a charging station out at the mall, let's say. So that's where this adapter comes in. This adapter, as you can see, will take the traditional J1772 at the public mall or the grocery store, plug it in there, and turns it into a Tesla plug on the other end. It's very simple, but it's compact and very elegant. Okay, so you say this is all hunky-dory, everything works beautifully on a Tesla, until the asterisks arrive. It turns out, if you were to hook up a public charging station in any manner to a Model 3 to get a DC fast charge, it won't happen. It's not because the pins aren't there to transfer the DC. It's because the communication is not allowed with a Model 3. That's different than a Model S or a Model X, I'm told. Now, I learned about this little hiccup from some public charging infrastructure companies who told me we can't fast charge a Model 3 because the electrical communication the handshake, the authorization isn't allowed. The theories, and these are theories, are that Tesla has recently made its supercharger network a fee-based revenue source. It's not free anymore, unless you're grandfathered in. As a result, they want you to bring your charging money their way when you want a DC fast charge, not to the other guys. So there's the world of voltage sources and voltage connectors to charge your EV. The question you have now, I'm sure, is this. Hey, Cooley, how does that tell me how fast I can charge my car? It's not that simple because it will depend on the size of your car's battery, measured in kilowatt hours, as we mentioned, and the design of the charger in your car and how aggressively or intelligently it can ram volts into that battery. It varies by vehicle. A couple of related topics as we wrap up. What about wireless charging? None of these silly connectors at all. It is a holy grail. However, it's got an issue. It's easier, but the trade-off is that it tends to transfer power less efficiently. As a result, your charge is slower. There are companies like Plugless that offer adapter kits for a number of EVs if you wanted to retrofit this on and just have a pad in your driveway you park over at night. And a big German manufacturer called Mala, which supplies to a ton of car companies, recently licensed technology from Whitricity to start developing something like this for car makers. That's an interesting development. The last question I get in this area frequently is what about battery swapping? This seems perfect, right? You pull into a EV service station and in about three minutes, maybe five, your car gets a battery dropped out and a fully charged fresh one plugged in. What could be wrong with that? Well, it turns out a number of things make it kind of hard to do. Number one is the charge state issue. When you go to a gas station, 
you can quickly go from whatever level of fuel you have to 100%. It doesn't matter. There's no inefficiency to it. That's the beauty of liquid fuels. When you pull into a charge station and swap your batteries, unless you run the battery down to almost nothing, which is nerve wracking, you're giving back a battery that has a fair amount of charge in it. And that's kind of an odd management task that isn't very efficient. The other concept is what about universal fit? To have this really scale, Ideally, every EV would use the same battery, just like all of our electronics use either AA or maybe C cells or triple A's. There's universality there. There is not that in the electric car business at all. And thirdly, residual value. A lot of EVs are leased, and even if they're not, you want to know residual value in terms of the total cost of ownership. And when the most valuable single part of the car is being pulled out and sent off who knows where, it becomes much harder to predict the residual value of the car. Imagine if you didn't know what engine a car was gonna come back off lease with. The lessor would say, we gotta lower the residual to cover ourselves. That raises your lease payments, and that's not ideal. So this area was abandoned by a company called Better Place in 2013. Tesla was playing with it. They gave up on it in 2016 in favor of superchargers. NIO, a coming electric autonomous car company out of China, is still big on the idea. So we'll see if it's got some life. So until we get battery swapping or wireless charging, learn the three major kinds of charge level and the four major kinds of charge connector. Kind of get familiar with those in the market because I think you're going to be handling fussy connectors and horsey cables for a while.